Rich Lund. This is Indie Labs, and we put the science in your hands. When we know something, we know it at a certain level. When we learn about a topic more in depth, you could say that we understand it now at an even deeper level. Take time, for example. Do you remember when you learned how to read a clock? For me, I'm pretty sure it was back in kindergarten. After that day at school, when the teacher had shown us what the big hand and the little hand were telling us, I felt like I had a pretty good idea about what time was. But then, a few years later, my fourth grade teacher totally blew my mind with the concept of time zones. You mean different places around the world are at different times? My entire outlook on the world changed. That day in kindergarten, when our teacher showed us what clock hands were telling us and what the concept of time was, that was a lot for us to take in. I don't know that the five-year-old brain is really ready for time zones yet at that age. We were ready to learn the concept at a certain level, just not ready yet for other levels. But the thing is, sometimes you're eventually ready for a new level of understanding of a topic. And when you learn it, it can be a mind-blowing experience. Well, I think, I hope, you're ready for this one. There's different types of magnetism. Back in the day, I used to think I had a pretty good idea of what magnetism was. Magnets exist. They have a north and south pole. If you've got two magnets, north and south poles are attracted to each other. And like poles, north and north, or south and south, repel each other. Got it. Or so I thought. And then I remember one day in high school, my mind was blown again. It was when I was about 16 that I got to find out that there's other kinds of magnetism. They're just weaker and so not as easily noticed as the normal variety we're used to. Different materials can have different magnetic properties. The kind that we're used to talking about when we say something is magnetic and can be pulled by a magnet is ferromagnetism. Elements that are ferromagnetic include iron, but also nickel, cobalt, and gadolinium. When in the presence of a strong enough magnetic field, they will become magnetized. They'll become magnets themselves. This is why if you have a paperclip stuck to a magnet, the paperclip can also now pick up other paperclips. Other materials, though, can be paramagnetic. To be paramagnetic means that you are also attracted to a source of a magnetic field, but it's a very, very weak attraction. Paramagnetism provides such a weak attraction that really you need a very strong magnet in order to observe it. Oxygen is paramagnetic, but in order for you to see that, you gotta get oxygen in the liquid state, which is something I did right here. And another magnetic property that materials can have is diamagnetism. To be diamagnetic is kind of like the opposite of being paramagnetic. Instead of being very weakly attracted to a magnet, they are very weakly repelled by a magnet. An element that is very diamagnetic and safe to handle is bismuth. And bismuth also happens to have a very low melting point compared to other metals. And that's why for this video, I took some bismuth and melted it into a bismuth rod for us to use and be able to see some diamagnetism in action. Here, let me show you a demo. Okay, now, even though bismuth is very diamagnetic, it's still a very weak force. So if we want to see the effect, that's why I'm hanging my bismuth here from a very thin sewing thread. And I'm going to use my very strong one-inch cube neodymium magnet. Now watch what happens. We bring the magnet close to the bismuth, and very slowly, it starts to repel away. It's a slow, very weak effect, but still definitely observable if we set up our experiment the correct way. Cool, huh? But here at Indie Labs, we're all about at-home science experiences. And I don't know if you have some bismuth just lying around in a junk drawer. But something else that's diamagnetic that I'm sure you can get your hands on is some pencil lead. And that means you can observe some diamagnetism too. And if you do the setup correctly, you can even levitate it. Here's what you're going to need. Okay, first, just like I said, you need some pencil lead. I know we say lead, but actually pencil lead is a type of carbon in the form of graphite. And graphite is diamagnetic. You want it to be very lightweight so that way it's easily moved by these very weak forces. So go with the smallest diameter you can find. For me, I'll be going with 0.5 millimeter diameter graphite. Now, the other items you need are some neodymium magnets. Truly, regular magnets, they're just not strong enough for this to work. 
But neodymium magnets are available at most hardware stores these days. They come in a variety of sizes, and any size will work to observe some diamagnetism. But if you want to do the levitation, you're going to want some smaller size neodymium magnets. You might also want some sewing thread, just like I use for my bismuth. And if you do the levitation, having a toothpick nearby also helps. Alright, you ready? Let's observe some magnetism that you might find a little bit repulsive. Okay, so the first experiment we really want to do is just first test and make sure our graphite is diamagnetic. Some pencil lead companies, their graphite might have some impurities in them. Sometimes those impurities are ferromagnetic. So with your graphite lying down on a smooth surface, start bringing your neodymium magnets closer and closer to it. If it's diamagnetic, once it gets close enough, the graphite actually will be pushed away from your neodymium magnets. Once you've confirmed that your graphite is diamagnetic, let's hang it up the same way I did with my bismuth rod. Find some way to secure it, and now bring your neodymium magnets close to one end of the graphite. Now that it's hanging in the air, and there's much less friction than when it was laying on the smooth surface, you should be able to observe that diamagnetism repulsion a lot easier. Okay, but now, for the final performance, here's the one you've been waiting for. The levitation. In order to levitate your pencil lead, you're going to need to lay out your neodymium magnets in an alternating north and south format. We're going to lay our pencil lead graphite along the surface of these neodymium magnets. And I found that the levitation works even better the more times the north and south poles are alternating along the length of the graphite. So for this reason, that's why the smaller the neodymium magnets, the better. Also, to get even better results, you may wish to double or even triple up the layers of magnets you have doing this. Once you got your magnets set up, very gently lay your pencil lead graphite across a row of the magnets. You might need to play with the orientation a little bit. That's where the toothpick can be helpful. I found that parallel to a row of magnets is the best orientation to get the most levitation. But also it's a little finicky and it's not always that stable. You kind of got to play with it a little bit. Certain diagonal angles also seem to work better than others. Once it's levitating, just pushing it a little bit can get it to kind of wobble back and forth and really show you that it is indeed up off of the magnets. Your pencil lead is floating in midair. How cool is that? So, what's the results? Did your knowledge level up? Whenever I understand a concept or a topic at a deeper level, I get really excited. It's awesome to learn something new. But part of my excitement also comes from the reminder that there's always new things to learn. Always new levels you can reach when it comes to something you think you understand. Learning something new then is kind of a reminder to me that there's plenty of things I don't know. And there's plenty of things that nobody knows. Yet. It's awesome to have your mind blown. But I think it's even more awesome to know that your mind will be blown many times in the future, if you keep learning. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode, and if you feel so inclined, give it that thumbs up like. And also, be sure to subscribe to the channel for some upcoming mind-blowing, leveling up expansions of your horizon. I'm Rich Lund, and I'll see you next time.